Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, if you looked at any of the motorsport press last weekend, or well, last week, or if you're online, you probably would have seen uh, some fabulous photos of a new project called Formula Thunder 5000. It's an attempt to bring back the glory days of Formula 5000 racing and to have real powerful, genuine V8 open wheelers racing in Australia again at the top level. To find out all about the new project, will you welcome to In Pit Lane the man behind it, Chris Lambden. Chris? Thanks for joining us. Great, good to be here. Now, tell us, um, first of all, what is the project, uh, in your own words, and where did, the, where did the idea come from? Oh, it started probably a couple of years ago, um, you know, and people have been talking about this kind of thing for a long, long time, you know, whether uh, you know, there, there could be a serious open wheeler category in Australia again, and I suppose it came from the fact that um, I used to be in publishing, as you know, and, and got out of that about four or five years ago. I had a little bucket list thing. I wanted to drive a Formula 5000 car, which I did. And uh, for anyone out there who uh, has uh, not done that yet, you need to do it before you die. It's brilliant. Most mad thing I've ever done. And just people started saying, you know, this is just great. Why couldn't, can't there be something like that these days? So we started to sort of think about it seriously and, and just look around to see what could be done. And, you know, here we are. The, the argument that always came up was, you know, was where are you going to get the chassis, where are you going to get the engines at an affordable price. Tell us about, about the car itself. You've got a prototype and we went out and had a look at it the other day. Yep. Um, tell, us all, tell us all about it. Well, to, to, to start a project like that from scratch in Australia, you know, com design and, and development, it would just cost a fortune, it would never, ever, ever happen. So we started looking around, literally around the world, to see if we could find a car that might suit our, what we're hoping to do. Um, an existing car that possibly ceased production. And um, we did, we looked everywhere and uh, we ended up at Swift Engineering in California. Uh, they built a car that um, was racing in Formula Nippon in Japan up until the end of 2012. It ceased production and, uh, you know, ultimately looking at it, it's a very, very nice car. So um, we were able to come to an arrangement with them to acquire the rights to it, um, the design, the moulds, the tools, you know, it filled a 40-foot container. So um, that was really the starting point. When, once we were able to know that we had something to base it on, that's where we started. Um, you know, and then from there on, it started to become more and more Australian by the day. You know, uh, we've ended up with a, uh, you know, the best possible V8 stock block engine we could. Um, you know, our, our engine guys at Innovate um, did the research, said, that's the engine, it's a Ford Coyote, Five litre modified, great engine, and then Australian Hollinger gearbox, you know, Australian um, shock absorbers, a lot of Australian content, and of course uh, from the start, Michael Borland at Borland Racing, who makes you know, race cars, Formula Fords, um, has overseen the project, and uh, as you saw the other day, our prototype's nearly there. When you say it was the, the chassis came from Swift, it's it's not you know it's not like you're bringing in a whole bunch of old chassis. Well, this is no. just basically you've got the you've got the design and you've got the moulds and that's everything. Right. So it will be fully constructed in in, in Australia. Australia. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, the the old days of oh gosh, we can't do this kind of stuff in Australia are, are, are gone. There's there's a lot of talent around, and uh, we've got all the tools to do it. Um, carbon fibre has been in motor racing since what 1984 when McLaren first did it. It's not rocket science anymore, but uh, you know, having acquired the right equipment, um, and there are some people around who are in a position to do it. Now, the, the engine, the, the Coyote engine, what yep. sort of power are we looking at? What sort of weight? Um, from, from the start, we, we set out to try and do this whole thing at a reasonable cost, because cost can kill motor racing. So um, the Ford Coyote engine, um, as you buy it, you can buy it over the counter in America in, in, in a sort of a racy form with some good bits, which is what we started with. Um, and then, you know, in Australia, uh, as I said, Innovate have added their um, fuel injection system to the top of it, uh, dry sump down the bottom and a few other little bits and pieces to make it very reliable. And, you know, I, I think in, in round figures, it costs about the third of what I believe V8 supercar engines cost. So, you know, it's about economy and it's about um, durability. And I think we're going to going to get it. So what sort of power are you looking to put out? Um, it's looking like uh, about 570 horsepower at the moment which is, you know, in almost bulletproof form. And so, um, you know, we're quite excited about the fact that you know, that kind of power in a, in a modern and very, very safe race car on big, big tyres uh, and reduced aero, it's what's needed. You know, even in some of the big categories around the world, you know, the drivers are saying, oh, it's too much aero, it's, 
You know, we, we want to bring the driver back into it, and so that's the uh, that's the theory. So, who drives these things? Is it a, is it a category for you know, like you know, cashed up middle aged men who are <laughs> living their living their Formula Five thousand fantasies, or is this going to be a category for, for for young talent to progress to from things like Formula Four and Formula Three? Mm. Look, it's going to be open. I mean, the one thing it won't do is it won't clash with historic Formula Five thousand. I mean, that's that remains one of the most fantastic things. You know, that, that hooked me, and you know the the, the the collection of, of genuine old race cars and stuff will never, never, ever be superseded. So, you know, we're aiming to, to create something that's effectively open. You know, yes, some of the young guys who come through the junior categories, um, you know, not all of them have the resources to consider going overseas uh, and racing. So, you know, they are what you call um, pathway categories. We're hoping this will be a destination category in Australia, a serious race category. Some existing race drivers and existing teams we hope will, will participate. Um, we are planning to run our, our primary races in the December, January, summer window, uh, which means that the, the teams that currently race in Australia you know, have infrastructure available they're not using that time of year. So where will these meetings take place? I mean, this, this is, you know, with that sort of power, with the weight we're talking about, these are going to be seriously fast cars. I mean, where do we run them in Australia? We've only got one Level 2 FIA-approved uh, track at that Sydney Motorsport Park. I suppose Phillip Island you're looking at. But uh, are you confident yeah. that we're going to be able to run these at any of the Australian tracks that are around at the moment? Oh, yeah, look, the, the cars have a lot of power, but as I said, well, it's part of the bringing the driver back into it. We've reduced the aero, so, you know, corner speeds won't be outrageous. Um, in fact, the cars will be probably a little bit faster than historic Formula 5000 cars, um, you know, and they, they race at most of the tracks. So we, we do plan to run on uh, full on race tracks for our, uh, our you know, collection of events. Um, I think street circuits is perhaps something for the future. Um, but you no, know, the, 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 our whole emphasis is on safety. The car itself, as I said, it's uh, 2009, I think it was originally designed, and, and it's 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 fully up to scratch with uh, the FIA front and rear and side crash stuff uh, in relation to 2009. So it'll be one of the safest cars around. One of the things that came out when, as we saw earlier, with the car itself and when the mm. pictures were released, one of the comments was about the the air box and the sort of the, the throwback uh, to the to the Lola T332 mm. days. Uh, is that something that you're um, that, that you're, you're fixed on or is, I mean, is there, a, do you want it to sort of, you know, pay tribute to those days or do you want it to be something more than sort of a motorsport equivalent of a, of a tribute band? <laughs> That's very good. Um, no, look, it really is just a, a bit of a nod to, to that, to that um, era. I mean, I personally don't think there has been a, a spectacularly successful open wheeler category in Australia since Formula 5000. Um, you follow social media since we announced this on Thursday. The the response has been huge. I'm just you know quite amazed at the response out there amongst the amongst the motorsport public. Um, so it's about yeah it, it's about um, you know creating something that that, that acknowledges the past, but, so it was, but it's about the present. So when do we see these? Just quickly, where do we see these on on track? When does when do you start getting that car out and uh, and testing it? Um, I think this prototype car will be ready in six weeks or so, and that's obviously the next step. Um, other than that, clearly, we, uh, whilst the reaction has been great, we need people in Australia, race teams, individuals who want to do it, to, uh, to uh, decide they want to do it. It all comes down to money in the end. Look, it, it's a fantastic, it's the first thing I've seen in open wheelers for a long time that has actually got people fired up and said, yes, we want to do this. So this is really, really good. Chris, good luck with it. Hope we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch with the project uh, as, it, as it grows. Um, but for now, once again, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane.